Every smile hides a secret, and some of them are deadly. Welcome to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi. Featuring retired FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Let's take a look at uh, one of the clips from the interview with police and Madeline Soto. Uh, the main point here is the police pointing out to her that she keeps prioritizing Stefan over her yeah. daughter. And there's some real disturbing reactions here when it, it comes to, I guess, just kind of brushing off, for lack of a better term, images of him assaulting her daughter. And oh, well, there's that, but then she just moves on. Let's take a look and we'll talk on the other side. Of Stephanie. No. The first thought you had was to ask his father if he should get a lawyer? No. I saw a picture. I didn't see the. I didn't know she was getting until yesterday. I saw the picture of the oral sex happening. And I, I knew that that was true, right? That's evidence. That's for real. That's fucking happening. But I kept thinking, they're going. I don't know why I kept, I, I can't tell you why my brain kept thinking, no, he didn't kill her. Not that he didn't kill her, but she's still missing. She's still out there. She was taken. Yes, he's done this to her, and that's not okay. But I swore she was still, I felt in my body she was still alive. She was still out there. I told Chris to get him a lawyer because I felt like you guys were, chasing the wrong person, but you weren't, you're not. We showed you a picture, but the picture you saw, she was giving a blowjob to a grown ass man. And you told his dad to get him a lawyer. Missing, right? Now you, <laughs> but then you just thought she was missing. And we were showing you our investigative lead. The blowjob is Not consensual whether she wants to do it or not that is not consensual and you prioritized him again you prioritized him by offering him or telling his dad to get him a lawyer not what the fuck did he do not, hey we need to figure out what happened no let's protect stefan i was in shock no that's not shock that is your natural instinct to protect stefan Okay, and if that's naturally how you react, that's fine. But that goes into what I've been telling you this whole conversation is I don't believe a lot of the things you're saying. and I don't believe a lot of the things you say you weren't aware of. And that is because you've now shown me twice that your first reaction, no matter what you were told or shown, is seeing we're seizing cell phone. And we're showing you pictures of her giving him a blowjob. Your first reaction is to protect Stefan. So now, ordered by Stefan, you're aware of this. You were shown pictures of this. You were shown pictures of her body in his car with a seatbelt on, right? We have played it out for you. Now, now you're in a stage where he's in jail. You know she's passed away. And now you can feel emotion, right? Until that point, when you were shown that she was deceased, your continued first reaction is to protect this guy. I see. I, you just said, I only saw a picture of him, whatever your verbiage was, I say blowjob, of his penis in her mouth, and your first reaction was, fuck. Oh my God. Victimized? No. She's being abused? No. It's Stefan needs a lawyer. Okay. Lots, uh, lots to unpack there. What was uh, your uh, take on that? I think we're we're seeing a lot here. Uh, I think, I think, for the the probability of her being unaware is pretty much zero, mm -hmm. because and the cop did a great job earlier on, you know, describing that you know even even couples that are cheating on each other with distance know that something's going on. Yeah. There's red flags and they lived in the same house. And so her, her, the likelihood and probability of her not being aware, I'd say is zero, 0 0.01%. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing here, we're seeing an emotional reaction to a truth bomb being dropped on her 
where she doesn't have the ability to disassociate from it. I think she disassociated herself from the reality. I remember I've read those, those descriptions to you of what dissociative disorder yeah. can do. Loss of memory, trauma, all these. I think she was witnessing it and completely in those moments, she was zoning out. So she doesn't, she wasn't absorbing what her eyes were seeing because when the truth bombs are dropped, that was happening. And so when you compound that reality of her mental state of a horrendous, <laughs> just horrendousness with the fact that, and I wrote this down, the first thing I thought of in, in here when regarding her and Stefan was for some reason, and again, I think because of her trauma bonding and her need to feel connected to someone, and I don't even say him, to someone, I say she thinks, I mean, j- just see how this plays when you think about her reaction. She thinks she can't live without someone like him. Mm-hmm. Not him in particular, I don't think, because she's not really emotional about him. She's tr- tr- I think she's trying to save the idea of him, someone, a guy, a man in her life. And I think she can't fathom that she can exist without someone like that. That's why she's rationalizing the behavior she's seeing, even though the entire time for four years, she's disassociating from it. Yeah. I I, I just, when, when you hear those facts laid out in front of her, the, I don't say callous, but the, the disconnect of it's disconnect, like, like, 100%. okay. And that's bad, right? Yes. It's bad. Or it's not Okay. It's more than not okay. It, it's it's just not a, a a a the reaction of a healthy individual to something like that. She didn't. He, she just kept going on. To, well, she's missing, right? Yeah, and you're you're sitting there giving a back rub to the guy that you found out did this, and you're, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It defies logic, but that's what some people do because their brains this isn't do not logical. Work. Yeah. You know, when you deal with the emotional brain, it's not logical. And so here's what I think is good news for justice for Maddie, and that is. All what we're talking about here is not excusing the behavior, it's understanding the behavior. I think she is screwed yeah, because she knew exactly what was going on. Um, she just wasn't absorbing what was going on. That's not an excuse for allowing it to go on. I think she's going to be culpable. I think it's going to be very turn out very poorly for her, not nearly as poorly for the scumbag that did it to her, to Maddie, but uh, she's screwed. Yeah, I mean, she's immune right now. Anything she said in that interview cannot be used against her. Um, but if there's new evidence that comes out, which I'm sure there will be in a case like this, um, that can be, um, so I agree. I don't think it's going to end well. Um, this is such a broken human being. Uh, it just, but, but at the same point, it's like, you're a danger. You're a danger to yourself. You're a danger to other people out there that you interact with because you are so broken. Hence, you shouldn't be out there in the public. Look what already happened to your daughter. Um, and that's where I just, I, I just hope she doesn't get a pass on this for helping the authorities. I hope that she is held accountable for her own, uh, you know, for her own part in this, whether she was completely aware of it or not, or even just had a, the slightest inkling. If you're a parent, you have the slightest inkling something's wrong like that. You don't just push away and, and create some sort of dissonance to it. But I, that's going to be the only thing she knew how to do. I know these two broken people destroyed a child. Yeah. Yeah. And I can only imagine their path of destruction um, beyond maybe not murder or anything, but the other people in their lives that they've, they've been around um, just utter destruction uh, for their own, for their own. We we see it time and time again, you know, people like this don't stand out as abnormalities amongst really healthy people. They are normal around their circle of influence um, in their lives. And so there's a lot of unhealthy around them. I guarantee it. Yeah. All right, true crime addicts, let's cut the crap. You're knee deep in the gory details of your favorite podcast when suddenly a commercial hits like a bad meal. Seriously? You deserve better. Upgrade to True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, where you can binge without those annoying ads. Plus, get extended interviews that go deeper into the darkness and early access to episodes so you can be the first to know. It's like trading up from fast food to fine dining, but with more blood. So go ahead, search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, and feast on the good stuff.